Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I thought I would sit down and do a video for you guys and gals. Let me get a sip of my water first. Get my beautiful radio voice going, and let's talk about this. All right, I had a couple of comments in a video that I had that came out this morning. You know, people are like, are you saying calories in, calories out doesn't work? No, I'm not saying that at all. Where people misunderstand this, and I've made videos on this in the past, but apparently people haven't caught those, so we need to discuss this. Uh, when people hear calories in, calories out, in their head, they think the human body burns X amount of calories, so if you eat X amount of calories in, irrespective of what it is, you're going to gain or lose weight based upon that static after number versus that calories in, when the reality is that that isn't what calories in, calories out means. Calories in, calories out means the calories that you take in relative to everything that your body does with those calories and with your metabolic rate, your need, everything else. And there's a big, big difference between those two. Okay? In other words, your calories out changes enormously based on what you eat right now today. Okay, so when people come up with their maintenance calories, that assumes you're eating the same amount of protein, same amount of carbs, fat, fiber, ratios of fat, all of these things. Okay, because as soon as you tinker with any of those other things, you, let's say you're eating a large amount of fat and you convert some of it from saturated fat to polyunsaturated fat or back and forth, that will affect the calories out. If you eat more whole food carbohydrates of the same number of grams, particularly if there's more fiber involved, your calories out will change immediately today, right now. And that's where people are misunderstanding when they're like, what do you mean protein overfeeding uh, doesn't store as body fat? And when people weigh protein overfeed, they start losing fat. That violates calories in, calories out. No, it doesn't. It absolutely doesn't. Because if your calories in, and actually your calories in may be lower than you think, because also that, that four gram per thing on protein isn't accurate, it's actually 3.2 calories per gram of protein. But then you have to think about the, the downstream effects of the protein overfeeding. What about the ethermic effect? What about the effects on meat? Keeping in mind when you overfeed foods that don't store as body fat, your body will just store the fat you eat, right? That will be its primary thing and it will find other ways to get rid of those. So uh, with the protein for example, your thermic effect is going to go way up. Okay? So in other words, if you're eating, and this is what they found, if you're trying to eat your current maintenance and you add 200 grams of protein a day on top of that, people always lose body fat. Now, part of it is what? Part of it is what? They're probably eating less if they're self-tracking because the protein itself has the enormous thermic effect. But here's the thing, in the lab and their lifters, they gain just as much muscle. So if you protein overfeed and you end up eating less as a result, the muscle growth is still just as good. You don't lose muscle growth as a result of the fact that you may have created almost a small deficit if you're truly protein overfeeding. This is what these studies are showing. But protein overfeeding isn't, hey, am I eating the amount that maximizes growth? It's, am I eating enough to create this enormous overfeeding effect? And it's, it's usually at least double of, of the two numbers. So, you know, what do we know for muscle growth? It's 1.5 grams per kilogram of body weight. It doesn't cause muscle growth beyond that. But when we protein overfeed, we can end up creating the same amount of muscle growth that we would even in a significant surplus but sometimes we end up eating in a small deficit because that's what seems to be happening. That's a, a people who reviewed the literature. That's what they think is happening, but it hasn't been confirmed. I've seen experts chime in on those studies and say, well, I think that they're really, they're just eating less calories than they think they are because they're eating so much protein when they're eating like 400 grams a day because that's what those studies are. It's stuff like 3.4 or something like that grams per kilogram of body weight. Well, for me, that would be 340 grams of protein. Whereas in that minimum number for muscle growth, that number for optimal muscle growth would be 150 grams based on those formulas. So that's what's happening. But then you also have the enormous thermic effect of that. You're gonna be hotter, you're gonna be warmer. And people forget that thermic effect can burn hundreds of calories in a day. 
in theory if someone were to push certain stuff to extremes you might even get up to a thousand calories of thermic effect but that's very extreme keeping in mind fat produces none of that really it's all carbohydrate and protein that do it it's the same thing with carbohydrate if you weigh carbohydrate overfeed what do we see in the lab what happens a very very tiny amount of it gets converted to organ fat like de novo lipogenesis it doesn't occur under your skin people are like well so does that violate calories in calories out because they're assuming that any calorie above your normal maintenance converts to fat and that's not what it means so what's going to happen in that case if you add if you're at maintenance or even above and you add a thousand calories or 1500 calories of carbohydrate on top of what you're eating yes you're going to start storing the fat that you ate and the fat that you ate is what's going to be the upper limit of what you're going to gain for body fat because you're not going to store 30 grams of carbohydrate as fat in a day it's just not going to happen so what ends up happening you would still gain some body fat yes dependent upon how much fat you ate that day what happens with the carbohydrate it gets burned off so it will try to super compensate glycogen through the muscles uh, the liver everything else right what happens to the rest your body kicks up neat you will fidget more like you guys see me sitting here fidgeting on my high carb diet you will fidget more you will move more so you'll see more neat your body will just start moving more to try to burn it off and then whatever else it can't gets kicked out through the mitochondria the muscle cells as thermic effect your body will just burn it so when people say calories in calories out that is calories out if your thermic effect and your fidgeting and neat all go up a thousand calories to compensate for all of this we didn't violate calories in calories out your calories out went up extremely well this is why i tell people carbohydrate or protein overfeeding are the key to lean gains because they simply let you eat more calories you get larger hormonal responses from these foods that are anabolic towards muscle tissue but our energy turnover goes up your maintenance calories goes up as a result of this and that's what people are missing with it we're not violating it we're changing your energy turnover this is the reason people who lift and it's like people are kind of like even me like you really eat you know, like 4,000 calories and you don't even gain when you're doing it usually I'm like no but think about how little fat I eat think about the fact that I train think of muscle mass think of thermogenic effect everything from all of that if I were to be eating a much higher fat diet my energy turnover might be lower I might gain weight on 3,800 calories instead of even being able to maintain on say 4,000 so therein lay the difference that people aren't getting we're not violating calories in calories out we are kicking up our calories out okay understand this is why these sort of approaches work for people not getting fat if you keep your fat low and this doesn't even get into the different types of fat and how some of those are prone to different things that's its own own topic that could be hours of conversation by itself but this is what's happening right this is why these work really well because it's harder to overeat these foods in general but then our energy turnover goes way up all right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.